Hello and welcome, opening round is near. And the preseason performances don't necessarily have me too excited to what we may be subjected to for the first couple of weeks with all these absences. Large amount of skill error, there may be a bit of work systematically to do and plenty of stopgap solutions needing to be put into place. Though that is of course the idea of preseason, as we said last week, experimentation and trialing new things. Harry Mackay is a player that is generating mass discussion right now off the back of an 18 touch, 10 mark, three goal, and seven score involvement sort of performance against the Ds. And he has been getting slated by the media, cough, cough, Damian Barrett, for missing a simple set shot. Whilst I do think it's a little bit overblown and that's the point of a column piece, I personally think that it's a bit of an unproductive sort of perspective. So today I'm looking to unpack and crush the Harry Mackay narrative that is circling in the media and um, understand all the ins and outs of his game. Because of course, by no means is he the finished product either. To me, the goal kicking conversation is incredibly boring. Harry Mackay in 2023, his conversion rate was 37%. I actually see it as a very huge plus that he is adopting a self-aware, self-conscious mindset when it comes to this area and, you know, improving, of course. Over the offseason, according to a recent The Age article, Harry talks about using a map to take away the extra vein of thought from goal kicking so it becomes habitual. And by using technology, more specifically a monitoring suit, he identified a stutter which was killing his momentum in his run-up. And by trying to compensate for the loss of momentum, he would lose shape, thus leading to major inconsistencies with his goal kicking. Whilst these inconsistencies showed in this match, I didn't really see a real loss of shape or stutter in that run-up of his. And from directly in front, he did not try any kicks around the corner. So consider that potentially improvement. I would suspect that this is going to lead to a more accurate Harry Mackay this season, as of course he shows signs of progress as he embraces feedback. Now, beyond that, Harry and the way he's fit within the team in preseason shows signs of optimism, yet also asks questions. The four themes of today's discussion with Harry involve being the second ruck, structure, player disposal, and mentality, all of which will show face in certain footage and interlink with one another. I've seen a lot of discourse around Harry Mackay being Carlton's second ruck over Mark Pitnett and De Koning, that combination. And whilst I am for seeing this over the course of the season, only within certain scenarios and to a limited extent. Ashley Hansen had this to say. It certainly gives us a lot of flexibility. If he, we need him to go up there for five or, or seven minutes a quarter, um, it really helps us create speed in other positions or, or complement support the ruck, the ruck positions, which is really important for us to have versatility and selection and for his game as well. Whilst I perfectly understand the reasoning, I have reservations about it and here's why. Harry is imperative to Carlton's structure. As a key forward, Harry usually explores up the ground, fills space, serves as a connector from arc to arc, and presents as a focal point in the forward line. If you take that resource away from your forward 50 and up the ground structure, Carlton's structure suddenly isn't as intact. If Harry Mackay is playing a weaker, less physical Ruckman where clearances can be capitalized on, I'm for it because you're gonna get those clearances and quicker ball movement is enabled as you play smaller with Charlie being the only recognizable key forward. But if that ruck matchup is a tougher assignment, as we saw when Harry was playing second fiddle to Gorn, I have concerns in Carlton's ability to transition inside 50. A, quickly, B, methodically, and C, with quality delivery. You can see Charlie Kerno's getting back with Harry Mackay in the ruck, having to compete with Gorn at the halfback flank. Charlie's needed to come up to the contest moments earlier leaving absolutely zero representation on the ground in the forward line with De Koning on the bench and Pitto out of the game. This is the problem with Harry rucking and not having Pitto in the side. And our small forwards don't seem to have the nous of knowing leading patterns really. That's in the last quarter at least. Only bloke is Orazio actually trying to do something and you can see this is an issue that seems to seep in on a yearly basis. When you bank on those two keys consistently, Having neither means you find yourself in unfamiliar territory and you're a bit more directionless. It's more habitual to bomb it into those focal points. I would have liked that Fantasia lead to be honored, 
or just a bit more proactivity here. Cripps is doing that thing where he points to space, but is trotting backwards and Carlton players seem to be absolute specialists doing this. There's just nothing else going on. Yes, it's the fourth. Yes, the heat is cooking them. But if Orazio is doing it, then more of them should. Here, good Harry Mackay intercept, but you can see he's not really kicking to anyone. He's kicking to the spot he should be in if he wasn't playing the ruck roll. Because Charlie is sort of pushed up, he's tracking back to try and make himself an option a little bit further afield whilst the D's defender is pushing forward. And so the possession falls flat and the D's get the rebound straight back where they just were with a kick very similar to how they got the ball to Van Ruyen. And so it begs the question, what's the right ruck formation? I would personally say that Pitto and De Koning need to play and you need a ruck on the ground. That's a recognized ruck on the ground at all times with Harry playing forward exclusively. This structure problem isn't necessarily exclusive to when Harry plays in the ruck. There were multiple occasions in this game it felt like there was minimal focus in getting it to a designated target. And that's why I continue to emphasize Harry's importance to both our offense and our defense. And that leads me on to the next point. Carlton conceded 65 inside 50s in this game, slaughtered by 22 with Ash Hansen stating, You certainly want the ledger to be more even than that. If Harry Mackay creates that structure, and is able to serve as the outlet out the back 50, you have the ability to clear your lines easier. Sometimes either these kicks are too shallow or the targets are too far away. So many times it feels like it's one or the other. Feel like positioning needs an improvement, especially in this case. We really compromise our ball movement in certain cases like these, and these exit kicks left a lot to be desired on multiple occasions. You see here without Harry Mackay, it presents a lack of forward craft. There's absolutely no initiative taken here and thus it causes an easy intercept for Melbourne and an easy re-entry into their forward 50. Not enough ground taken from our perspective. Probably should have taken the kick from a more boundary sort of position and manipulate the angle a little bit if you're Adam Saad. This back 50 exit is absolutely rubbish but you're seeing what happens if possession is ours. This wing position is so important as we've mentioned last week talking about stoppages and winning it at the coalface. But in open play, it's equally important to get these marks. We mentioned how Wheaters taking intercepts can kick off a chain going forward. Well, Harry is an excellent piece to sustain that possession you've started as you exit the back 50, which can help you to advance further up the field. Good mark on the wing by Harry Mackay. Checked his run a little bit better than some cases where he got nudged under it. So on this occasion, he can lean back and take the grab. As we discussed with Harry taking a mark, you can have your runners go past, or he can swing around on this side of the ground and go more centrally or swing it down the line, courtesy of his left foot. If it goes out of play, the Blues back line are far more protected and can afford multiple lines of defenders protecting the last line as we're closer to our goal, rather than having no depth on exit and having just one defensive line, which serves as the last line. Harry here reads the switch, moving across to the open side, leading up so we can get it up the ground. De Koning's at the wing position and Charlie's in the forward line. This is the way you sort of like it with that balance, one tall in each contest. You can see aerially it becomes easier and cleaner or more appealing to the eye. That said, for all the good Harry provides when it comes to structure, it comes with increased responsibility. Harry needs to want the football, and you saw when the opportunity presented on Wednesday night, Harry demanded it. However, it's more the situations where he has to manufacture an optimal situation and take initiative where question marks can be raised. This is where I want to see Harry be more authoritative. I want him to be in a deconing sort of position, but I do think if Harry's going to be a bit removed, he needs to compensate by having a ground level presence like he did here. This is what we must avoid when the intensity lifts as the season commences. Adam Saad has absolutely no option ahead of the ball. Disposal is rubbish at the end, but realistically, what is he kicking to down the line? We can't see on screen the tools, but we can see there's nothing on shorter, which probably indicates the incredible stagnancy upfield as the game winds down. We can't afford these sort of lulls in our game. This will indicate the importance of turnover in our front half, in which we know what the results are. And we've also talked about all those numbers committing to lock it in our forward half. Of course, defenders included. Off that kick out, there's all this space and that's where Harry sits. 
I love how he absolutely demands it and that type of kick is absolutely perfect for him. These are textbook plays you want the Blues to employ time and time again because you will be successful, especially if it's in the hands of Boyd. He's already got the separation on the opponent so all you need to do is put it in that space. The only reason Harry didn't mark it is because others beat him to the spot. And this leads me to my next point, locking it in our front half. As we said last week, it's going to be imperative we lock it in our forward half for the defensive vulnerability we have further afield, obviously behind that sturdy defensive line that is much higher up. The more you lock it in the forward half and get this turnover, the more of these chances you will generate. David King said in the last quarter, about halfway through. Carlton have won the ball back in their forward half tonight. Only six times, seven times for the night, as opposed to Melwood's 15. Further, the Blues were in the bottom six for tackles inside 50 last season with Ash Hansen highlighting the D's success on the other end was from a... Lack of probably pressure in the first half to support our backs, to allow their positioning to be able to support and win their battles. Melbourne's forward pressure was superb in netting them this huge forward 50 advantage they had. And to be quite frank, the Blues need to do the same. So Harry gets these opportunities that encourage a more demanding side to him. That statistic highlighted by David King also shows how important Carlton's disposal will be going inside 50 as they capitalize on mistakes they force and as they emphasize turnover. Equally, if Carlton have these down games where they don't bring pressure, to compensate, they need to be strong when they have the ball with their decision-making and disposal. If Harry marks, there's two outcomes. He goals, center bounce. He misses, you're well set up. This falls back onto the midfielders. And look, as Ashley Hansen said, and they're only gonna get better when we start using the ball better. So look, the ball is in your court. Harry Mackay is over 200 centimeters tall and mobile. So it's of course in your best interest to provide him with silver service and utilize these advantages so he can go back and take these set shots he's been working on so tirelessly. The Blues in 2023, despite being fifth for marks on the lead, were 12th and 14th when it comes to marks inside 50 and the rate in which, 12th for shots at goal per inside 50, yet were second for offensive one-on-ones and second for rushed behinds. This would indicate the delivery into the forward 50 the depth and height of our kicks, the dynamics in our forward 50, and how congested it is, and the outcomes of that. In the first half of this game with Carlton only registering four scores, Carlton only had four marks inside 50 and one mark on the lead all over the field. Harry was number one amongst our tools last year for marks on the lead. It's a no brainer to be better in this respect, actually feed into the advantages you have, and stray away from this predictable bullshit that we continue to do. Let's highlight some examples. If you take away Harry as a focal point, you have more shallow kicks being sent inside the forward 50 or kicks which clearly advantage the opposition. Overcommitting on offense means transition can be devastating, even with Harry on the ground in this case. That's why he's got to want to be dominant and demand it. You can see with this example, even though Harry is that target, I want these kicks enabling more of a run and jump instead of Harry having to jump with minimal momentum and not being able to be extra outstretched. The disposal compromises the resource we have in Harry as an outlet, and so the defense are going to have issues as the ball slingshots back into our defensive 50. I envision this is the sort of play we need to see a bit more from the Blues, low piercing deliveries into the forwards, and Harry may be put off by the sun here, but I'm liking where it's placed, to his advantage. Try and encourage key forwards like Harry to have to move to the ball as opposed to remaining stationary. I've also noticed that the small forwards seem to contribute to self-sabotage in a way. They got in the way of the key forwards on multiple occasions and rather than being independent and trying to lead up themselves, they were more complementary to the tools and they actually brought on extra attention to the key forwards. I still want them engaged in the contest, especially if Harry or Charlie drops the mark, but preferably drag your assignment far enough away from the contest so you don't get interference and you're not blocking a leading lane. This setup kick by Ollie Hollands. No separation by Harry and Charlie, and you would like Harry to come forward. Make the space in front instead of clogging it up. And of course, I'm referring to other players involved in this mix. 
Notice where all the players are situated. Defenses feel comfortable when there is more players about. Less players equals more space, more exposure, less support. And you allow an easy exit because you're feeding into the spread. You're way too narrow. There's more space for these these players to run into. Easy back 50 exit and an easy transition for the opposition. We don't like those. This hit up by Doherty, however, is the exact sample I want. No small forwards in the vicinity, more space, lead up, kick into the space, and Harry can meet it. Less players equal more space, more exposure, less support. I'll re-emphasize that. And these are the results. This is an excellent sort of kick, the same type of kick I like as I've mentioned, and that space opens up again because the small's a roundabout, not quite in front, and notice how there's one demon in Lever getting shielded off it to open Harry up. I'm not sure how this wasn't called a free kick, but you are seeing, as we've mentioned with regards to defensive transition, Harry taking marks of course means that you avoid the risk of that easy back 50 exit that may arise because of poor forward pressure, and thus they get it over the back. Right here, that is exactly what happens, and I can foresee something like this happening in opening round. You sort of see a similar trend even with the key forwards as well getting in the way of one another which has been pretty common for some time now and you really want to see this chemistry develop further. Here's one example where I'm very confused. Why don't we have a key forward being proactive and moving across? Instead they're camping in the goal square. Especially with Tom DeConing here, he's blocking off that space that you may want one of these guys to run into. So the positioning is probably off and it means there's no focal point inside 50. I mean, I'm probably not talking about outcomes if Newman hits the target, but that said, it's usually a default thing for Blues players to go key forwards first. So for no one really to want the footy when a proactive switch has been made, that intuition, I think that's something that really needs working on. So look, all signs point towards Harry Mackay having a much stronger season than he did in 2023, Upon having taken some really good strides in the preseason, with Ash Hansen saying, I thought Harry's been arguably one of our best the last two weeks. However, there is plenty of room for improvement that both him and his teammates can recognize and act upon for Harry to reach the heights that he is more than capable of hitting. What are your thoughts having seen the analysis today? Do you agree with me? Is the criticism justified or uneducated by the media? And what have you thought about preseason? Are people right to be concerned about what we'll see from Carlton in the short term? Drop a like and subscribe if you are new here. I'll be posting Carlton analysis for every single game in 2024 to the highest possible standards. So stick around for that. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Enjoy your opening round. Bye for now.